The following is a live copyrighted presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time now for Radiolawtalk.com with your host, Frederick Penny, attorney at law. And now, Radiolawtalk.com. This is the place you want to be while you're working, while you're relaxing, while you're doing whatever to just listen to Radio Law Talk. I have a lot of people that listen to us all the time. Construction workers, believe it or not, listen to us, and they have it on. Instead of like you go by a construction site, they get the loud music going. There's a number of them that I know, not necessarily even friends, but kind of just that are just acquaint general acquaintances. In the construction site, Radio Law Talks cranked up, you know, on whatever day it is. They're cranking Radio Law Talks. So if you want to listen to us, you can go to our website anytime during the week and listen to us with our podcasts. Go to www.radiolawtalk.com. Call us at 855-LAW-RADIO or tweet us at Radio Law Talk. Remember, we're talking about general topics of law. We are not giving you opinions, and I have some wonderful people that email us at info at radiolawtalk.com and, and ask questions, and I appreciate those questions, but, you know, we can't give legal advice over the phone. I mean, you know what, you, you could generally talk about it, but a lot of times you're ac- asking specifics about areas that, that we don't know a lot about, so... But thank you. Keep emailing us. But on our website, it shows different lawyers that are in different areas of law in different states that uh, maybe you can call them. Not plug in the site, but that's how you can do it. So that's important. Remember that. But again, it's important to remember what? the, The best time to use Radio Law Talk about legal topics is around the Christmas dinner table or Hanukkah, or whatever you have, or Thanksgiving, or... Or the water cooler. Fourth of July is coming up. When you're at your next Fourth of July party, so you look smart and cool, remind them, make sure everybody's about half drunk, though, okay? Make sure they're a little bit tipsy, that you know a lot about the law because you listen to Radio Law Talk. So, So when somebody says... Well, you know, they did a study back in 1940. They said that the court's going to take this on up here. And you want to go, well, who's they? Well, well, you know, it's they, the infamous they. Well, I'm telling you here, I got a Radio Law Talk, and Radio Law Talk says that that is all a bunch of garbage. You're going to trump the they. That's right. So that's what we want to do, trump the they. So anyway, that's what you can use us for, but don't use us to go – your Honor, um, yes, according to Todd Cunin at Radio Law Talk, the following applies. Oh, sure. Uh, would you like to quote that? Uh, what was the date of that show? Okay, yes. Yes, I'll take that under submission and um, and review that and put it in my uh, uh, papers later about what my ruling is going to be. Don't do that one. So anyway, we're having a good time here. We're going to talk about some interesting things. We're going to talk about uh, kind of a Florida Gator football star is charged with the murder of his wife. I hate to be so negative, but, but there's these interesting uh, legal topics that we talk about. Um, we got some NBA head coaches being sued for, uh, uh, you know, sexual assault, or at least allegedly sexual assault. We've got Kevin Hart being sued by supposedly one of uh, his bodyguards harming an individual. We're going to talk about that. We've got a lot of other things to, to go through. But the most important thing we do during this hour is do case or no case, which is a time where Cal tells us about a case, and it's either a true case or it's a fake case. we got to determine it as lawyers whether or not he's tricking us, and we got to determine the outcome. And it's a game. And if you want to play along, you can tweet in. You can call us at 855-LAW-RADIO. You don't even have to be on the air. So we're going to roll case or or no case. Now it's time to play Case or No Case. Yay! All right. Well, today I take you to the second city, Chicago, Illinois. The Cubs at one time, you might recall, had a an employee by the name of Mark Guthrie. You might remember him. He was a pretty successful pitcher, and he made a fair amount of change. The Cubs paid him in the year 2004. I mean, after all, he had a contract. Uh, but very soon thereafter... The Chicago Cubs parent company realized they had a problem, and they said they wanted their $300,000 monthly paycheck from Mark Guthrie back. Mark Guthrie said, I don't think so. And so the scuffle was on. Everybody was consulting lawyers, and paperwork started flying back and forth. And so I ask you, 
And I started with you, Fred, last time, and I'm going. Uh, I'm going to have to start. You started with, with me. Okay, so I'll start with. Uh, okay, let's go with Fred. I ask you, Fred. Case or no case, and if it is a case, what is the outcome? Okay, Mark Guthrie. I I miss. I was reading something else, so I missed the very first part. Mark Guthrie was who? For the Chicago Cubs. Yeah, I know that. Okay, I got that. A picture for the Chicago Cubs. Right. And the Cubs gave Mark Guthrie a check for right. $300,000, his monthly pay. Right. And then they said they wanted that check back. And Mark Guthrie said, I don't think so. Uh, yeah, so one, another one of those don't have very many facts. Uh, but here's the answer to that. The answer is those contract goes to the contract. And uh, the first thing is, is that a case? It is definitely a situation, but whether it's a case, I got to determine. Um, <clears throat> under the contracts, these NFL contracts, these MLB contracts, you know, NBA contracts, a lot of them are not guaranteed payments for monies. And they probably accidentally sent it to him and he wasn't supposed to receive it. So the answer is, this is a true scenario, but not a case. Hmm. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Mr. Kunin, what say you? Can I ask a question? I don't have to answer it, so yes, go ahead. So The question that I want to ask is, at the time that Mr. Guthrie was receiving, was it one or multiple $300,000 That's checks? his monthly paycheck. At the time he was receiving these $300,000 paychecks, two questions. One, was uh, he still an active baseball player? Yes. Okay. Two, was it during the season yes. or during the off season? Season. During the season. Active player during the season. Correct. And three, was he with the big club or was he in the minors? Show. He was in the big show. All right. I'm going to say that this is a case. I'm going to say that pursuant to the collective bargain, so it's a case, but it doesn't get filed in, in a state court or before the EEOC or Wait anything for wages. A minute. It's a case, but it's handled via the arbitration clauses in Major League Baseball. So it's a case, but it's a case about his pay, and he's a player, and it's, hard, it's handled pursuant to the arbitration clause. And so I, I think that clearly if he's not giving it back, the team wants their money, so they take him to – arbitration to get it back and i am going to say that the player wins he gets to keep the three hundred thousand. he's not entitled to future payments but if they paid him they paid him and he gets to keep it okay denise what say you case or no case and if so the outcome if you please all right i believe that these contracts are front-loaded that they get a big, huge payment to sign on, a like bonus, a sign-on signing, bonus, signing bonus yeah. and that part of that sign-on bonus also contemplates some monthly payments at a certain point. And I believe that it is a case, and I believe that the player loses because they paid up on the sign-on bonus and paid things up front, and then they started paying on a monthly basis before they were supposed to start paying on a monthly basis. Hmm. So he loses. That is, your answers are all so fascinating, and you have overlooked an obvious, and such an obvious component in all of this. And don't tell us, though. I don't want to know. I'm not going to. I'm not going to. Okay. Can, 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 I, can I ask one more question, you, then? We've got about a minute left. Was he so, still yeah. playing for the Cubs? Yes. Oh, all right. Yes. Yeah. You asked, he you had, asked that. Well, no, he had, I was, he might be in the show, but he might be for another team. Might have gotten traded. So Mark Guthrie oh. was still playing for the Cubs. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All I got to say is... It's not fair. They kept got to ask ask questions and cross examine while you. Uh, you can ask I'm, I'm a little yeah. whiner. You know, I'm kind of whining about. <laughs> he was a pitcher. So, but I am going to say, my, mine is it's a real scenario, but not a case. And then the two you said it's a case. Todd. I say it's a case. Pitcher wins. And, then and you I said, said it's a case. Pitcher loses. All right, we're going to be back after this, and Cal's going to tell us about the Guthrie pitcher three hundred grand situation. Hey, call us at 855-529-7234 or tweet us at Radio Law Talk. We'll be back with more Radio Law Talk very soon. All advertising for legal services on Radio Law Talk is strictly for the state or states in which the advertiser is licensed. For more information, go to radiolawtalk.com. 
Not all law firms have extensive experience in all areas of the law. It's wise to look for firms that have knowledge and understanding in your particular area of concern. So go to ProLawFirms.com. They have listings of attorneys in key areas of practice, such as family law, estate planning, personal injury, bankruptcy, and so forth. When you're looking for a lawyer that has extensive experience in your particular area of need, go to ProLawFirms.com. That's ProLawFirms.com. ProLawFirms.com is not a law firm and does not endorse or recommend any specific law firm. Jason Ross back here with Fred Penny, managing attorney from Penny and Associates Injury Lawyers. Now, Fred, what type of cases are you dealing with now and what sets you apart? Jason, we help people with all types of personal injury cases. We're former insurance company trial lawyers. We understand the other side, which gives us a distinct advantage over our competition. Remember, we don't get paid unless we win. That's Penny and Associates Injury Lawyers with locations throughout California. For a free consultation, go to PennyLawyers.com or give them a call 1-800-616-4LAW. That's P. E-N-N-E-Y lawyers.com. This is Denise Dirks. We can represent clients in divorce, legal separation, child and spousal support, custody, termination of parental rights, step-parent adoptions, guardianships, and even conservatorship matters. Call 1-877-886-7186 for a consultation. The law offices of Denise L. Dirks provide family law services in Northern California. When the law affects your family, call 877-886-7186. The family of attorneys at Denise L. Dirks is here to help. Hi, I'm Frederick Penny of Penny & Associates Injury Lawyers. I bet you're tired of hearing lawyer commercials. So just relax and listen to music for a few seconds. When you or a family member has been injured, call 800-616-4LAW or see us at pennyandassociates.com. See, that wasn't so bad. I'm going to quick quack car wash, get my car washed, make it quick quack, pretty shiny sexy just because I want to don't drive dirty, going to get my car suds in the quick quack car wash. It's the quick quack, quickest and the cleanest by far. We're talking three skinny minutes sitting right in your car. Wash a hundred feet of cloth, washing your car at the quick quack car wash. Any Honda, Mazda, Ford, or Chevy, Sauber, Cadillac, quick quack. Don't spruce her up just like that. You'll be happy looking snappy. You'll be glad you was at the quick quack car wash. Get on the web and go to don'tdrivedirty.com and see where you got your closest quick quack in the local area. Get in your car. Get in your truck, get on the road, come visit the dog. Quick Quack Car Wash, where your car will always leave happy, guaranteed. They take pride in being clean and green by conserving and recycling the water they use only at the Quick Quack Car Wash. All right, guys, we need to have you read some lines for our disclaimer promo. But first, can anybody tell me what a disclaimer is? Right then. Well, uh, Denise, you go ahead. Non uti consilius me oriere por questus purpurium juris consult. Latin, that's a nice touch. Thank you, Denise. Next time we'll try it in English if that's okay. Fred, how about you? Cal, I don't want to read all this. Can we just tell the people that we're discussing general legal issues and they should hire their own attorney instead of relying on what we have to say here? Well, we could, I guess. Uh, uh, Chris? I'm not going to be there anyway. Why have me do it? Let's, Let's have, have Todd, Todd do it. it. Me? Read disclaimers? Why, I couldn't. <coughs> the information you hear on Radio Law Talk is general. The preceding promo was for entertainment purposes only. And if you want true legal advice, contact your own lawyer. Just a tip from your friends at Radio Law Talk. Be sure to read our disclaimers on RadioLawTalk.com as well. You're listening to RadioLawTalk.com. And now, back to your host, Frederick Penny. Who is the winner, Cal? Who's the winner? You guys, you guys, you guys. You, you don't disappoint me, but every once in a while, I think I finally managed to come up with a scenario that you have not thought through all of the possibilities. And this is one of them. I'm going to tell you that, uh, the, uh, let's just get this all out of the way. Those of you who say this was a case, may I see? Well, a scenario. Of hands, that so that would be all of you. Yeah. All right. No case, nothing but occurred. For those of you who say that the player wins, may I see by a show of hands? For those of you who say that the Chicago Cubs win, a show of hands, Denise... 
Whoa. So now, I, I lose no matter what. That's yeah, now, saying. here's the problem. Yeah. Okay. Here's what you are not able to think of, and it's my fault specifically because I gave you enough cryptic information to maybe allow you to figure it out, but not really. Cubs win. Cubs win. You see, the Cubs were then owned by the Chicago Tribune, who also owned radio station WGN, which stands for World's Greatest Newspaper. You all know that. Everybody in the broadcast business knows that. A humble moniker. And the newspaper has paper carriers, newspaper delivery people. A careless member of the corporate payroll department sent Mark Guthrie, the paper delivery person, the check for Mark Guth- Guthrie, the baseball pitcher. Got his 300 grand. <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> and the, the paper carrier did not want to send the money back. He said, you paid me. I'm keeping it. And the Cubs said, I don't think so. So they went to court. The Cubs prevailed. They kept a good relief pitcher, but apparently lost a good paper porch pitcher. And oh, so that paper is, porch pitcher. You put that on our thing. Yeah, paper so porch. that is. So, so, so let, me, let me get this straight. Hey, hey paper porch pitcher. Yeah. When I asked if Mark Guthrie yeah. was a player, you said yes. Yeah. A paper porch pitcher and a baseball pitcher, both. He was. There were two Mark Guthries. I, I, I know, I know, but I, I would have thought it was implied that when I was saying Mark Guthrie, the recipient of the three hundred thousand, you, you didn't say that. Oh, okay, all right. He was being cryptic. He, uh, of course, he was being cryptic. Cal outsmarted the lawyers. I was, I was just not in me. <laughs> so, so, so from now, so from now on, I gotta ask because I think the, the question is: Had they been playing Mark paying? Mark Guthrie, the player, three hundred thousand. If that was more, I don't know if under the collective bargaining agreement they'd get it back. I'm telling you, I'm representing the as a plaintiff's lawyer. I'm going to represent the paper thrower. Yes, I the knew. paper thrower. I would hope and pray is thirteen years old, and I'm going to drag that little paper guy into court and Guthrie <laughs> and the Cubs. And I'm going to have the jury look this little boy in the in the in the eyes and say, "You don't deserve that 300 because you only throw papers and he throws baseball." Ooh. Ooh. Oh man! But of course, he, he just, didn't deserve the money. But still, but that's okay. I'm, I, no, I'm not saying I'm bringing any fraud up. I'm just saying, look, who who does the jury gonna like? Can you imagine that brief moment? When that check is opened up at that individual's home, and he goes three hundred grand. No, I got to get to the I bank. No, it's called it's called bonus. He, he writes in the little bottom in the corner, bonus. I better run this down to the Bank of Chicago right away. It was it's a true story. It didn't last. Made a little riffle in the Chicago newspapers, and I don't know if the guy left the newspaper or not. But for a brief moment. He was a well-paid paper carrier. Yeah. Nice. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is Case or No Case. That's awesome. Have Again. another one next time, so stay tuned. Yeah. The, the cat was out of the bag when the paper carrier drives up to work the next morning, you know, in a, in a Bentley or Ferrari. Ferrari. <laughs> he drives up. What are you doing? Well, well, you know, Mrs. Jones over on Elm Street left me a pretty good tip this month. <laughs> well, especially it's going to throw him off when he's 13 driving the Ferrari. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, I, I got my chauffeur, Jeeves, over there. I believe this was an adult paper carrier, but I am not sure. Oh, let's, let's make it not an adult one. Let's Just make to make me feel good. That makes it fun. Yeah, yeah. I remember as a kid, and I tell you, my you, know, you don't know my age, in the 60s, I remember delivering papers hey, as a kid. If I got a 25-cent tip when I was collecting, oh, I was a happy guy. Oh, I and I remember that. riding yeah. my bike around the neighborhood and throwing them, and it's a 3.30. It was scary to me. To me, as a little boy, it was scary to ride my bike. It was dark. Don't forget, it was still dark, and you're cruising around the neighborhood. <laughs> it's just the interesting people you see you know, when you're cruising around as a paper boy parked at 3 a.m. in the morning, you know, so anyway, that I don't think exciting. they do it that way anymore. Everyone yeah. up in our area is all adults because of the liability. Yes. So, liability. Yeah. Well, you know what? I, there's another thing we wanted to talk about that was very interesting, sad again, um, but an Arizona teacher uh, is having uh, accused of having relationship with a 13-year-old boy, has now pled guilty, um, and we'll see what her sentence is. Uh, what's interesting about this and bizarre, Denise, is she, he, he was, what, 13 years old, 
She's 26 and married. She's, she's 20, 20, 27. 27. 28. She is now, but she was yes. 27 yeah, at but, the time. But quite, uh, you know, she's a quite attractive gal. And um, the interesting thing about it is, is kind of the scenario. What was happening? It was happening during school in the classroom. And and the important part that it is almost funny, but it's not, is, hey, hey Jimmy, uh, can you watch out for me? Uh, I got something going on here. They actually had a, another 13-year-old boy as their watch. You know, the their guard, lookout. their you lookout. See? Their lookout. Can you tell me who you? If I'm the lookout, and they walk up to me when I was in eighth grade and said, Fred, uh, can you look out for me, blah, 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 something like this? I'm going to go, wait a minute. Wait Except a that minute. this wasn't, she was a sixth grade teacher. The kid was 13 years old. It's really not funny, and it's really it's not, not something we should make fun about. She is facing between 13 and 30 years. We can make fun of her for being a dope. No, we, I'm not making fun of the kid, but I'm just saying, I, I just putting myself back as an eighth grader. As an eighth grader, are you not saying to yourself, he was sixth grader? No, well, no, no, she no, taught no. Sixth grade. I don't think he was one of her no, students. She taught sixth grade, but he no. was, no, he was 14, he was 13 or 14. He was 13. Or 14. And that's not sixth grade. That's not sixth grade. Okay. That's not sixth grade. But my point is, is, no, what's your job? Your job is to be the lookout. I mean, what? Come on, man. What's going on with the lookout? Well, anyway, we'll come back and talk briefly about it. We're not going to spend a lot of time. It is sad, but I'm sorry. I just put myself back to my eighth grade days and, and, and what type of kid I was when I was in eighth grade. So we'll be back. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the next Florida Gator star uh, is charged with murdering his wife. Allegations again. We'll be right back. All advertising for legal services on Radio Law Talk is strictly for the state or states in which the advertiser is licensed. For more information, go to radiolawtalk.com. Hi, my name is Lily. My mom and dad used to fight about money all the time. Then one day, I heard them talking about this guy. Some uncle I never knew called Uncle Sam. Well, they say this Uncle Sam guy wanted them to pay him like a gazillion dollars. And they didn't have a gazillion dollars. So they called this company they heard on the radio called The Tax Doctor. And The Tax Doctor worked with Uncle Sam's people. I think they're called the IRS. And they're able to work it out so my mom and dad didn't have to pay Uncle Sam very much money at all. So now mom and dad are happy, and I'm happy too. Thanks, Tax Doctor. If you owe $10,000 or more to the IRS or state, call now and pay less. 800-263-2610. 800-263-2610. 800-263-2610. 800-263-2610. That's 800-263-2610. Know someone with a drinking or drug problem? Learn how to get sober after we share these stories. I was 35 with two beautiful children when my life and addiction started to spiral out of control. After my divorce, I went into a depression cycle and started drinking more often and using prescription drugs. After my second DWI and arrest, my ex-husband threatened to take our children away from me. I was 17 when I became addicted to heroin and meth. I thought I could quit on my own, but I couldn't. It hit me when I was arrested. Get sober now. Your private insurance may cover costs and we'll get you here. It's simple. Just call Elite Rehab Placement right now. Please don't wait. Your life matters to us. 800-918-1376. 800-918-1376. That's 800-918-1376. Warning, don't let your business get left behind in what is likely to be the biggest economic boom in recent history. If you need to build for your business to grow, call General Steel today for a pre-engineered steel building designed for your needs. No wasted space. Steel prices are expected to rise, but you can still lock in your price on a General Steel building. And you can still save as much as half the cost and time of conventional construction. As much as half. But you must call now. If you need a church building, office, warehouse,
warehouse, manufacturing space, retail space, or more. Call General Steel today. You can still get the General's 50-year structural warranty and General Steel quality, all at a price you can afford. So don't let rising steel prices put your project out of reach and stop you from making your company great. 800-617-9312. 800-617-9312. 800-617-9312. That's 800-617-9312. I'm going to quick quack car wash, get my car washed, make it quick quack, pretty shiny, sexy, just because I want to don't drive dirty, going to get my car suds in the quick quack car wash. It's the quick quack, quickest and the cleanest by far, we're talking pretty skinny minutes, sitting right in your car wash, 100 feet of cloth, washing your car at the quick quack car wash. Any Honda, Mazda, Ford, or Chevy, Sauber, Cadillac, quick quack, no screws her up, just like that. You'll be happy, looking snappy, you'll be glad you was at the quick quack. Car wash it on the web and go to don'tdrivedirty.com and see where you got your closest quick quack in the local area. Get in your car, get in your truck. Get on the road, come visit the dock. Quick Quack Car Wash, where your car will always leave happy, guaranteed. They take pride in being clean and green by conserving and recycling the water they use only at the Quick Quack Car Wash. Even in the hustle and noise of this modern world, we feel the pull of the forest to walk under the canopy and feel transformed. National forests are essential to life. Majestic and grand, they clean our air, supply drinking water to millions, and provide homes to countless wildlife. They fuel our imaginations, inspiring us to think big, and now's the time to do just that. Fires and natural disasters devastate our forests each year. That's why we're replanting millions of new trees across the country. The Arbor Day Foundation needs your help. We've heard the call of the wild, and we've answered. Scientists, foresters, volunteers, and members, together we can preserve and protect our heritage and legacy. We must act now so that the generations of today and tomorrow can continue to depend on our forests. Visit arborday.org. See how you can help. Time to get back to Radio Law Talk on RadioLawTalk.com and on your favorite radio station. So we're talking about this Arizona teacher uh, uh, that uh, was accused of having sex with a 13-year-old. But what we want to get into... Well, she pled guilty to it. She pled guilty, but the interesting part of it, Denise, is how did they find this out? And this is why we kind of... We're very careful in what we say and how we... You know, what stuff we want to bring up. But the interesting thing is how the parents found out. Well, I think, first of all, the student himself did not report it. And secondly, the student that was the lookout for one time, he also did not report it. But the parents um, began monitoring their child's phone with an application um, that somehow was monitoring either conversations or monitoring um, where the child is or something to that effect. We don't know exactly what the application or the phone app was, but that's how they found out. And what his parents said, they said that this married 28-year-old teacher was a monster who should spend the rest of her life in prison. And under Arizona law, if the victim of a sex crime is under the age of 15, then it is recommended that they they may get life in prison, but it is more likely they're going to spend at least 35 years in prison for having a victim of that age. You know, it, just a couple of things for parents out there. Uh, you got to understand that kids, and you know, I've got kids, and uh, but in this age range, I got a son who's 13 years old right now, and kids aren't using. If they got an Apple and iPhone, they're not primarily using the iMessage to text their friends. They're downloading another app called Kick, which is a separate, it's a texting function. They use that. It's, an, it's, a, it's another level to keep parents away uh, from seeing what they're, they're texting. They'll text using the messaging functions on Snapchat. And if they send video messages, those go away and they're not retrievable. But, I mean, you can almost see in a situation like this, maybe what tipped the parents off. you got a 13-year-old kid, and that's a time in a person's life where they're Mood starts to change, the hormones are going, and that's when when people start to really 
you know, change their personalities. And if the parents notice something, that may have been what tipped them off to look at his phone, to study a little bit more, to see what's going on. But he didn't come forward. I think it's interesting. I was reading on uh, Twitter one person because she was charged with the act. She was also charged with an attempt of the act and with committing an act in she pled to those in, in public. She she pled to those. Mm-hmm. And somebody was somebody was saying attempt. What are you talking about? Well, factually speaking. She had asked some inappropriate questions of the kid that was standing lookout, okay? And I would be pretty certain if the charge that she pled to for the act was with the kid that she engaged in the acts with. But the attempt was with regard to the other kid. And all you need for an attempt is you got your elements, but taking an effort, taking substantial steps to engage in that and by asking him certain questions about his uh, his genitalia, which she did, I think it's pretty easy for the prosecutor to look at it and would be easy to show a jury, well, she did this with this guy, and then she started asking this person that question, and I and, and maybe they had text messages also going back and forth, but she, she was grooming him to do that. So you get the attempt, and because it took place in a car, one of the, that would be your public act. So, um, I just wanted to make the point that there are over uh, – I just was reading a Daily Mail story. There was 170-some cases like this in the United States in one year of female teachers going after underage male sexual victims. Your kids live in a highly sexually charged environment. Their cell phones don't stop that. They aid it and abet it. Yeah. So if you're a parent that's concerned about that – then please find a way about watching what's going on in your kids' cell phones. I mean, that's really what this story tells me anyway. And it tells me that your kids are not safe at school and – not not just not just because of violence in school, but also because of um, perpetrators. And they have no judgment. They well, have no judgment. A teacher comes after them sexually, and one of them goes, "Oh, sure." Well, hey, let's right. cut. I mean, yeah. let, let, cut right. to the chase. Let's yeah. let the elephant in the room is as a young boy. Um, you know that it's like, how many young boys have had crushes on their teachers? Many. They do. That's just that's and or young gals have crushes on their teachers. And as a teacher, you got to be be careful of that because you well, know, yeah, because they look yeah. up to you. That's right. And and then they put trust in you and confidence in you. Position right. of authority, That's just like right. the highway patrolman with the gun, a person right. in a position of authority. Yeah. Right. You know, and it, I may come off sounding old-fashioned or like a prude saying this, but the other thing that this speaks to me on is, you know, people have been wondering what the effect of instant ability to view the internet and view anything and the sexual revolution that really, I mean, started in the 70s with Playboy and Hefner, but it really started to take off once the internet came around in the 90s and the 2000s and all these different things were accessible. And and the question was, how is this going to affect people long-term when the kids who see this become adults? And now you see more adults in their 20s who were teenagers when all of this was coming about and you see this activity that they're engaging in that we know instances of this happening in the past but it just seems like there's more of it now and i'm wondering what effect the cause and effect about what they saw when they were kids and now they're adults it's it's affecting is their behavior. it is it more of it or is it just brought out more now i, I would think say it's, it's brought out i more. think it's brought out more because where when i grew up in the 60s and the 70s i'm not i don't know everything but it was it, it happened then too and this but i think it's brought out in this new internet age and, and cell phones and and all that stuff. And, and, I, and I would like to say this. Um, I think it was brought out first with females and them being victims and the males. It was kind of like, oh, lucky guy or something like that. And they don't they don't really realize that there is a long term impact to children of both um, sexes and both genders of having this kind of victimization. And they do become a victim. And so I'm just thinking that now we're taking it more seriously. We're not just saying, oh, he was a lucky guy and, and treating this 13-year-old as if he's an adult that made a decision and a consent. And and I think finally we're taking it seriously. Well, I, I think, Fred, there may have been a lot of that going on, but no teacher sent a kid a picture of their chest, true, true. you know, in the, in the 60s and 70s or 80s when you and I were going to school. It's that it's much more accessible and many more females are involved in this. It's going both ways now. Yeah. Uh, it used to be the softball coach and a female player. Now, and I, I 
your show every day, and I check for these kinds of stories every day because I just think it's it's a shows a breakdown here of some sort, yeah. and I, there's as many, if not more, females on males than the other way around. One of the most popular searches for in on internet pornography is the teacher student fantasy. That is one of the most popular searches out there. A, a student who gets held after class by their teacher. It's something that the public is looking for, and it's you know. Not me, obviously, but it's out there. And right, so, yeah, right. it's it's an issue. I would say let's move on. Let's talk about Luke Walton. Tell me about it. Um, Luke Walton is a, is a Sacramento Kings coach. He was just hired, but he previously was involved in two other um, uh, foot, not football, basketball um, enterprises. Right. And while he was involved with uh, the first enterprise, there's a court reporter, not a court reporter, a, a reporter. Well, he was with the Lakers. He and was then, with the Lakers. And then he was assistant coach for. With the Golden State Warriors. She was a sports reporter who made the right. claim, right? right? Yeah, she's a sports reporter, and she has alleged and actually now filed a lawsuit against him. And she has left it open whether she's going to add more defendants. But she claims that he um, sexually, not only sexually assaulted her, but also went on to sexually harass her continuously. In 2014, she's claiming in a hotel room. Apparently, she wrote a book. Yes. And this book had like what's called a forward. If you know what a forward is, it's kind of a little discussion. And I guess Luke Walton was part of that in that forward or helped write it. I don't know the details of it. So she brings the book to him and said, it's done. I want you to see it. Let's take a look. And, and apparently, he invites her up to uh, the, the allegations. Again, allegations, everybody, because... Uh, in today's world, this is what I don't like as an attorney. I think people have their rights is anyone can allege anything. But the allegations are that he uh, assault, sexually assaulted her when they got together in, in the room. I mean, that, uh, she, she doesn't claim that he actually, uh, you know, he, he, he tried to, you know, he, he pinned, pinned her on pinned the her, bed pinned and, her on the bed things, and yeah, did some right. stuff like that. But no, nothing. Allegedly. Yeah, nothing. Uh, I don't want to. She see. was able to stop. Get it. away. Yeah, she's able to stop it and get away. And and he finally backed off. You know. So the the, the biggest problem I know we're running out of time. The biggest problem I think she's going to have here is timing, because she says that this happened while he was an assistant coach with the Lakers. After that, he signed on was the head co or assistant coach for the Warriors. He became the head coach of the Lakers for three years, and during that period of time, said nothing. And she didn't make the allegation until after he left L.A. Right. That time is going to be it problematic yeah right? the other thing is there is no criminal allegation it's no That's criminal right. case this is a civil case so we're going to find out what's going on with that we're going to talk about kevin hart uh being sued for a woman alleging she was assaulted by one of his bodyguards we'll be right back after this lots more radio law talk is coming up right here don't go away Advertising for legal services on Radio Law Talk is strictly for the state or states in which the advertiser is licensed. For more information, go to radiolawtalk.com. Jason Ross back here with Fred Penny, managing attorney from Penny & Associates Injury Lawyers. Now, Fred, what type of cases are you dealing with now, and what sets you apart? Jason, we help people with all types of personal injury cases. We're former insurance company trial lawyers. We understand the other side, which gives us a distinct advantage over our competition. Remember, we don't get paid unless we win. That's Penny & Associates Injury Lawyers with locations throughout California. For a free consultation, go to pennylawyers.com or give them a call 1-800-616-4LAW. That's P-E-N-N-E-Y lawyers.com. This is Denise Dirks. We can represent clients in divorce, legal separation, child and spousal support, custody, termination of parental rights, step-parent adoptions, guardianships, and even conservatorship matters. Call 1-877-886-7186 for a consultation. The law offices of Denise L. Dirks provide family law services in Northern California. When the law affects your family, call 877-886-7186. The family of attorneys at Denise L. Dirks is here to help. If you're one of those independent people who want your own business and you love food service, we just might have a great opportunity for you. Drive-ins, 
Iceberg is famous for its thick shakes and delicious food. We lend you our supply chain and expertise, and you can potentially have a thriving, successful, fun business that your customers will love. Iceberg Drive-Ins has some prime areas available right now, so if you're interested, get in touch with us right away. Go to icebergdrivein.com and click on the Contact Us button. Iceberg Drive-In, ready to grow with you. My name is Frederick Penny of Penny & Associates Injury Lawyers. I've assembled an excellent team of highly experienced personal injury trial lawyers. We understand the other side, which gives us a distinct advantage over our competition. At Penny & Associates, we will aggressively represent you and your family when someone has been injured in an accident. Remember, we don't get paid unless we win. For a free initial consultation, go to PennyLawyers.com or call 1-800-616-4LAW and ask for Frederick, Stewart, Rob, Kevin, Kent, or Will. That's Frederick Penny of Penny & Associates Injury Lawyers, 1-800-616-4LAW. For law. Not all law firms have extensive experience in all areas of the law. It's wise to look for firms that have knowledge and understanding in your particular area of concern. So go to ProLawFirms.com. They have listings of attorneys in key areas of practice, such as family law, estate planning, personal injury, bankruptcy, and so forth. When you're looking for a lawyer that has extensive experience in your particular area of need, go to ProLawFirms.com. That's ProLawFirms.com. ProLawFirms.com is not a law firm and does not endorse or recommend any specific law firm. I am Cameron Levitt, Chief Operating Officer of Concussion Medical Clinic. California's first concussion medical clinic is now open. As concussions increase each year, there has never been a greater need for concussion specialists. Our physicians at Concussion Medical Clinic are board certified in pediatric neurology and sports medicine and have partnered with universities, hospitals, and rehab clinics to expedite the recovery process. Simply put, we are elevating the standard of care. When you need an expert concussion opinion, or concussion care, visit concussionmedicalclinic.com to schedule your appointment. Most of my family, they never graduated high school or even let alone go to college, so I'm trying to break that barrier. My daughter, Brooklyn, was also a motivation for me to go back to school. Every day after work, went straight to school, studied hard, and, and it paid off. At age 26, Kareem finished his high school diploma. I could not have done it alone. I feel like if I didn't have anyone to push me, I wouldn't gave a bother to do it. I got one milestone down the drain and now I gotta work on the next. I see the future is really bright for me. I feel like it doesn't matter the age, as long as you go back and get it done. The high school diploma is just added to the confidence and now I feel unstoppable. No one gets a diploma alone. You have more support than you realize. If you're thinking of finishing your high school diploma, you have help. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. That's finishyourdiploma.org. Brought to you by the Dollar General Literacy Foundation and the Ad Council. Is this real life? Yeah, it is real life. We're back at Radio Law Talk talking about Kevin Hart being sued for assault. Apparently he was uh, in, in New York. This is according to TMZ. Um, uh, they've obtained some documents that... All he was doing is is he was coming out of a hotel, uh, and as he was coming out of this hotel in New York, apparently there's people, you know, I, he, I know who he is, but he, I didn't realize he's so popular. People are kind of going crazy trying to get to him, but um, as he came bustling out of the hotel, um, there's people coming after him. He was screening a movie, and apparently this lady alleges that she was knocked down, pushed down by his bodyguards and or someone else through the bodyguard pushing, we're not quite sure, and that she had severe fractures or injuries to her face, and now they're uh, bringing a lawsuit against Hart, his production company, and SAG, by the way, which is uh, interesting. But uh, for assault and battery, and they haven't put the money down, but my my point on this is some things we just want to talk about, not in detail, but just say, hey, this is starting out. I'm sure we'll be following through with this. This is a case that's going to be uh, in the news for a while. And, and the only reason, I mean, look, there are a lot of defendants. This is a list of the defendants currently named in this lawsuit. Kevin Hart, Heartbeat Productions, Interpol Private Security, the Screen Actors Guild of America, um, Gladden Properties. And then this is common, and, and Fred, maybe you can talk to this, John Doe. And they'll, they'll allege John Doe because they want to leave it open to maybe add somebody else. Or there's somebody there we don't know, but once we find the identity, we'll throw them in. Yeah, let me tell you something interesting that people don't realize. They always say, you personal injury lawyers, you're, you're, you're scumbags, you sue everybody. You, what you have to understand as a lawyer when you're suing, if you forget to add someone in, 
Sometimes you can add them in. Sometimes you cannot if you had knowledge of them. So lawyers have to just pretty much lay everybody out. You know, just add everybody in that may have an, may have the opportunity or may have caused injury to this person. And then the does, 1 through 30 you put, does 1 through 30, you'll see that a lot, means any additional people you can add later. And that's what they say. Oh, well, why don't you just add them later under a doe? You can if you didn't. Jet, this is the general law without getting – if you had no knowledge of them. Yeah, but if, as you're going through the discovery process, maybe they're going to find out that this particular security guard was a contract employee right. or an right. independent contract employee for a different entity, maybe for the the place where um, he, Kevin was exiting, yeah. for example. So that would be a very typical scenario we where don't. you'd add then the John Doe the person who contracted that employee. So, so this is why they're suing each each person. You've got SAG after us. Why are they suing the Screen Actors Guild? Well, Hart was there attending the screening of a movie. It was just opening and SAG was putting it on. And so they're saying that you were negligent, not providing enough security. And I got hurt when this stuff, you should have known that people were going to be rushing around Kevin Hart. Uh, the same thing for Gladden, which was the premises area. Interpol is the security company that the security guard worked for, negligent in that. Uh, Heartbeat was the production company of the film that was being screened. It's your fault because you were doing this. Um, and then you get to Kevin Hart because, well, you're the one that hired the security guard and, and poop flows uphill. <laughs> so, right. And so what's interesting yeah. about that as a, as a plaintiff's lawyer, you have to add as many people as you can because you don't know who you're missing out. And you're right. You can add more people under dough. Right. And then somebody – one of the defendants then can also make a claim or uh, cross claim against the other defendants, or they can do a cross claim against the plaintiff, saying that you're the one that was uh, negligent because you know you were in the way at the time, or you knew that there was going to be big crowds and you pushed your luck, or whatever they're going to say. So this is going to be one to watch. And there are defenses, though, Denise, that. You know, again, in New York, I don't practice in New York, but every state's different. But but generally, every state's going to have uh, some rules uh, that the defendant can show that the other person helped cause this accident or was in the way, like you said, Denise, where they knew they were going to get knocked over or et cetera, et cetera. So um, anyway – yeah, go ahead. You have another so, so the question I've got is on the complaint, it says it's a verified complaint versus I, I've heard of verified complaints and unverified. What's the significance of a verified complaint? That means it's sworn under penalty of perjury of the state that laws um, that the suit is brought in. And that means that the factual allegations in there arise to the level of testimony and like – um, almost like a, it's like a declaration or an affidavit, if you will. So a verified complaint is much stronger type of a complaint because the person signing that complaint is verifying the facts contained therein based upon personal knowledge. Now, for example, in California, in state court, does it have to be a verified complaint? In federal court, I believe it does. No. It depends on what it is, okay. is my understanding. I thought that if you're alleging um, – sexual type nature uh, under civil that it does have to be a verified complaint especially when it's a long time it happened a long time ago yeah man. right i don't i don't do i've done my yeah. partners have done those but I've so I, yeah. I could see a plaintiff's attorney going well hold on a second here how do i make an allegation that i'm pretty certain is true but it's not abs i, I don't know that's what i want to get discovery for and if i verify it and say it's true you know i, I perjury and i think that's why isn't that why we end up seeing the language for example on information Mission and, and belief. belief right at all times mentioned here in blah blah so then they can say well yeah i was it was on information and belief i didn't say it was there i thought it might have been there but I'm, I'm covered but usually when you say upon information and belief you have to state the where did you derive that belief from or that information from so usually you say upon information and belief Based upon testimony of this person, you know, that's that's where I got my information and belief. And so when somebody responds to that complaint, so somebody files, plaintiff's attorney files, that defendant responds to it, isn't it that you've got to file a response that answers each individual allegation as opposed to just generally saying we deny everything in the complaint? Because now you have to respond to each one that could be um, 
a separate allegation made under the penalty of perjury. That's my understanding as well. Yeah. So we're going to follow through with this. This will be an interesting one to follow. I'm sure it's going to be coming up in the courts later. But uh, the ex-Florida Gator star, a guy by the name of Tony Joyner, he was a he was a cornerback, corner back for the Miami. Um, uh, hurricanes and actually i didn't realize this guy he was part of the it's the florida gators uh, florida, yeah the gators yes. I get that, miami i meant the florida gators yes and he was part of that championship team that won the national championship it was under urban meyer yes yes in 2004 to 2007 he was a team captain and apparently he's been married to this gal about four years and um Apparently, she was found dead on Valentine's Day, 2016. There had been a few prior incidences where they had had some uh, domestic, domestic violence. Yeah. And, uh, and he was the perpetrator. And he was the perpetrator. And so they had ju they've just, what, arrested him. So it's allegations right That's now. That's right. But they had two kids. Now, prior to the arrest, the, the deceased woman's mother had actually gotten legal custody of the children so yeah, she got guardianship guardianship of the children so even though he hadn't been charged at that time he didn't have uh the, the kids the guardianship of the kids was the deceased's mother and so we'll see how that goes just want to point out make sure that everyone knows this did not happen and it's not alleged this would have happened while he was a player at florida state florida state had a had a lot of stuff going on but, but this wasn't time. one of them this happened long after his florida state and it career. happened three to four years ago so yes. this is a late uh charge it, it actually happened in 2016. well here's the incident i'm going to ask you denise in general so uh you, we, we brought up the issue of um uh, what were we talking? We were talking about something. I was going to ask Denise about, a, about 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 domestic violence. Domestic violence. Something about that. I, you know what? I'm getting old. I can't remember. That's why I was raised. Well, or guardianship. Myself. The guardianship. That's yeah. what I want to ask you. So why is it that the mom was still alive at the time, but that that she received guardianship? The mother did of the children. No, no, no. Grandmother, maternal grandmother, received guardianship after mother was killed. Okay, that's what. So I'm what to happened out. is that there was suspicion that perhaps that. Um, uh, Tony Joyner was involved in her death, in the mother's death, his wife's death. And so the maternal grandmother went in and showed to the court that it would be prejudicial or something like that for the children to be in the custody of their father. Yes. The, the, she died in 2016. Maternal, grand, maternal guardianship was granted in 2017. Got That's it. been the status for the last two years. Well, exactly. we'll, we'll be following that one also. Well, we appreciate you being here this whole hour with us. I know sometimes we're... Uh, not the most exciting people, but we talk about some fun stuff. Call us at 855-LAW-RADIO or tweet us at Radio Law Talk. Remember, that's it for this hour of Radio Law Talk. We're going to see you next time. And remember, all three hours are posted on RadioLawTalk.com every week if you want to hear it. Thanks for turning on Radio Law Talk on your favorite radio station or on RadioLawTalk.com. You have been listening to RadioLawTalk.com.